Alrighty, so this might be the last video that I'm going to be doing in two weeks, depending on if I have any time in terms of making some short videos regarding some MLS news or even some resort during my time in Japan. But for this last video, I want to pretty much grade every single team in MLS uh, into this season so far and that, you know, we're already a quarter into the MLS season. I know, it feels like it's a blink of an eye, the fact that we're now a quarter way into the season. And I think we can safely say that there is definitely a good sample size of how each team has performed. Some teams, of course, have done very well to start the season. Some of them had a bit of a mediocre start to the season. And then some are definitely off to a pretty bad start to the season. And of course, some are just saying, yeah, let, let's let's skip the, the next three quarters and let's let's already maybe think about see you uh, next season mode. But instead, here we're going to be rating each of these teams. Obviously, A is that it's absolutely amazing. B, of course, it's been pretty good. C, of course, is, yeah, it's okay. D, of course, is where we started to get a category of, yeah, it's been a bit of a soul star. And then, of course, F has just been an absolute disaster and that we don't want to talk about how this season has ha has gone for us. So we're going to go alphabetical order. Uh, we're going to start with Atlanta United. Um, I'm going to also go with plus and, and minus for those of you that are asking. I'm going to give them a B plus. You know, obviously we know Atlanta so far when they are at, at their best, they have definitely looked like a team that could could be a contender out of the Eastern Conference, especially in some of these games that they play at home. They've been playing very, very well. The problem is, is that, you know, on the road, that's been kind of a bit of a different, different story. And I know, you know, so far in terms of their road game, when you look at the first two road games, the first game was against the defending MLS Cup champions. So that is probably the toughest way to, to start your road trip. You have to face against the defending MLS Cup champion. And then the second road game against Toronto, they basically missed half of their roster because of international break now the third row game um has a little bit bit more telling tale but you know they didn't really do very well in that third row game as well though so, you know at least their whole home record is definitely strong and i think if that can continue and that if they can uh find some good role for them then there's no no doubt that this atlanta team is going to be con contender and that we can truly say that atlanta is truly back now for austin um i'm gonna give them a bit of a generous generous rate i'm gonna give them a d plus i i know some austin fans will say that it's an f but i i will say this with austin you know as bad as at times that they have looked this season and at times that i could easily give them an f, f grade especially in terms of some of these role performance my god these role performance that they've been putting lately has been just atrocious really bad in, in some way i mean they they just there's not only getting outplayed by their opposition, but they're not even generating any shots in, in some of these games. Like, there's games where they only generate, like, two or, or three shots on the road and just getting completely outmatched. And that last game uh, was a was an example of it as well. Again, St. Louis just getting absolutely outmatched for, throughout the game. But I will say that the saving grace for Austin is that they're not dead last in the league, despite by, at times they've looked really bad. And look like a wooden spoon kind of team. And a lot of that is because their home form hasn't really been as bad as people uh, think it is. And it's, and, and it's especially the fact that, you know, you look at the last couple of home games that they have. They've won those, those home games. I mean, they got their first win against Dallas. That was a game that they looked more like the Austin of the O. And then in that 4-3 comeback win against the Quakes, that was like the Austin uh, of the second season. Having that re resiliency of coming back no ma matter what. So, because... Of that, I, I think you, you can't say that, you know, Austin has just had a terrible start this season. I mean, there there are teams that are, are way worse in terms of points total than what Austin is. But let's be honest, they're also not, not great either, especially on the road. I mean, if you want to judge by road performance, I think Austin would be at an F grade. Uh, then we go to Charlotte. Um, I'm going to say A-. Um, I, I, and I know Charlotte ha has had... Had some some rough performance there and there, but I, I, the reason why I give them a very high high grade is with the talent that Dean Smith has to to work with, and just really, really there there there's a lack of, of talent, especially on the attacking end. The fact that the, the this team are are in playoff contention and are and, and at, at times they able to pull pull off some big big wins, especially at home. Yeah, I mean you got to say this has been been incredible. Oh, I mean I, I fought with the way that Charlotte looks. Coming into the this season, especially with, with the lack of uh, of quality in their team, I thought they were going to be competing with Toronto for the wooden spoon. But that has been been and it, 
that has been completely wrong in that, you know, Dean Smith has done an amazing job, especially to the defense, too. The defense for Charlotte has pretty much took a 180 compared to last season. Last season, they were shipping goals uh, for fun. This season, they've definitely done a better job in terms of that. And while their goal scoring is still a bit of an issue, because, you know, this team still lack a lot a lot of quality going forward on the attack. And that, of course, happened when you decided to sell uh, one one uh, uh, of the most important attacker, if not the most important attacker in Karol Schwedetsky, but they're hoping uh, Leo Abada w- would be that kind of guy, and, you know, he got kind of got off to a good good, good start. Uh, well, he didn't get off to a good start, but finally get his fir- first goal in the last game, and they hope that, that there will be more to see because of that. Now, for Chicago, um, I'll say C- minus for Chicago. Again, I know Fire fans will say, say they should deserve an F grade because at times that they pretty much follow the old narrative of the fire blowing games le- left and right. But I will say that at least just like what I said about Austin, a- 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 as much as, you know, at times that they, they ha- have looked bad, there's worse team in the Eastern Conference than it is the Chicago Fire. And I will say, unlike Austin, Chicago at least, you know, some of these games that they, they, they play, they look com- competitive in, in some of these games. It's just that they, of course, follow old narrative and decided to, to self-destruct as we've seen many t- times before. But, yeah, I-, I think this has been a very typical kind of Chicago Fire start to the season. So, I think C- minus maybe a-, a good grade uh, for the Chicago Fire. Now, for FC Cincinnati, um, whew, I'm going to give them a C grade. And this might be a little high for Cincinnati fans considering uh, the-, the struggle that they've been, been ha- having lately. And, again, it feels like it's the same same problem that they have in the beginning of last season where they got off t- to a start where, well, on, on paper, their record is pretty good. The problem for that, them is that they, they had a lot of issue in terms of scoring goals. And at least last year, they were able to grind out r- resort left and right to able to get off to such a great great start to the season and put up the points. This season hasn't been the case. I mean, the goals throughout, of course, is still there, but they, they're not getting the, the, the resort and especially their defense. Definitely, um, I mean, it's still... Gr- Good, but it's de- definitely not God level like what we saw uh, last season as well. But that being said, I-, I also would say that you know I can't really put Cincinnati like maybe a, a D or or an F grade because they're still in a pretty good position in the Eastern Conference. And if they can just figure out that that attack, they can definitely get themselves back to to form. And that that grade, of course, can easily change. But for now, I'll say it's a C grade. Uh for Colorado, it's got to be an A. I mean, it has to be an A. And I. I, I, I've said this many times about, about the, the Colorado uh, Rapids. You know, if you just minus that that disastrous half that they had against Portland um, in, in the first game, Chris Armas has done an amazing job to, to this team. And I argue that despite the fact that the Rapids are sitting, I think, in fifth place in the Western Conference, they should be near, near the top top uh, three of the standings because, you know, they got robbed in that game against Houston. They should have got at least a point out of that. And if you do the math, they should be in the top top three in the standings. And um, this weekend, of course, I know they, of course, beat a te- team like the Quakes that are pretty much are having a t- disastrous season. Uh, isn't really really a, well, a well-recognized kind, kind of feat, but the fact that they were able to beat them handily and win 3 nothing on the road, which is the biggest uh, victory margin that they have on the road in a very long time. And not to mention, they have also beaten some really good good team, too. I mean, they beat LAFC or uh but before uh to at at home i mean that's you know i know lafc hasn't really been getting off to a good good start but like this rapid team is able to overcome uh that disastrous start to the se- season which i mean that first game there was already rapids fan that were maybe calling for chris armor's head because of how disastrous it it, it was yeah, I don't think there was a lot, a lot of Rapids fan calling for Chris Arm's heads and that this team has played very well. I will also say that the defense of this team has been, has exceeded expectation and has really surprised a lot of people because I, I thought this defense, you know, alongside with the attack was my main concern. But this this year, that defense has really hold on and hold out and that Zach Steffen is started to, to, to really show showing that the, the goalkeeper that he, he was uh, a couple of years when he was with the U.S. men's national team. Now, for Columbus, um, I'll say A- minus for Columbus. Again, you know, it hasn't been been, been per- perfect in terms of how their, their season has gone in terms of league play, but in terms of them battling CONCACAF Champions Cup and all, all, also 
MLS play and still are near the top part of the standing. And also not to mention missing uh, Cucho, Cucho Hernandez for for a, a couple of games because of disciplinary action and, of course, the red card situation. Wilfer Nazi has done an amazing job to this club, this team, and that there's no doubt that I have to give give at least an A minus grade for the job that he's done. And and the death has really showed up for this Columbus team too. I mean, we know that this Columbus team not only is top heavy on the on the, the starting eleven, but a lot of people know that this team has a lot of death. And that death has really shown 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 huge to, to this crew team to a point where they're they're getting resort, even though they don't have the their their strongest uh eleven. Now looking at DC United, um I'm gonna give DC a C plus. And you know, I think Troy Lesane has done a great, great job uh, with DC, and I've said many times before that I think DC is one of those teams that they're a prime example of a team where the the way that they they play does not really uh, replicate what they have in terms of, of the points total. And I know, I know, there's also the old saying about the the points. You are what you are when you look at the the record and the points, but I think DC might not be that case. I mean, I think they've been playing very well. It's unfortunate the fact that that DC the biggest issue for them is that they just can't quite finish uh, games and ca can't quite play that same level throughout the full full ninety minutes and because of that that's I think is kind of where I put them at, at, at C plus and there there are also still issue uh with this DC team I think the defense is still a bit of an bit of an issue but you know overall on the attacking front Bentege is still scoring so so yeah I'm gonna give them a C plus because of that. Now, looking at FC Dallas, and this is where I give my first F grade. Yeah, so for Dallas, it's been an absolute disastrous start to the season. I mean, I've already mentioned it before, besides their first win against the Quakes, which now looks more like, like it's an indictment of how bad the Quakes are, rather than, than Dallas getting off to a good start to the season. But after that, they have just not, not only not won a single game, but they have no looked terrible in most of the games that they play. And, and you know... What's even more concerned about about Dallas is the fact it, you know everybody talk about how bad their their attack is and they just can't get the 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 lid off the goal. The defense have also regressed too, um, and even the goalkeeping too. I mean, Martin Paz hasn't really been been that 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 stellar goalkeeper compared to what we saw saw last season. I mean, so decent, but definitely not 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 out of the world like what we saw last year. And plus the fact that as I mentioned, the 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 back line has definitely been been more unstable. In able compared to or unstable compared to previous season and shipping off goals that they shouldn't be compared to previous season that's where you get a, a dallas team that is just getting off to a terrible start to the season they have not won a single ga game ever since their their first game of, of the season and for a team as talented as this team is especially on the attack in the attack yeah this is an excuse ball and it has to be an f grade now for the houston dynamo it's not an a i mean the the fact that the the Dynamo a uh, uh, a team team that right now without their their best player in Hector Herrera and yet they still are able to to grind out resort both at home and also on the road and that's that's the key word too on the road too because as I mentioned before Houston this is a team that always when they when they play on the road it's pretty much an automatic L for them but that's not the case anymore I mean Ben Olsen team it's almost like Ben Olsen has started to implement. That 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 style of soccer that you know I think a lot of DC fans can kind of warn warn Houston fans about how he once he implemented that negative style of soccer it's gonna be really tough tough to to watch. Well, he has kind of done that because of the la lack of, of talent that that this Dynamo team has because they didn't really upgrade uh their team and also not to mention missing their their best player in Hector Herrera. Even though it it hasn't been pretty to see. They're getting resort, and that's all it, it, it matters at the end of the day. I mean, you can play some of the prettiest soccer, but you don't get the resort, fans are going to be frustrated. But if you get resort, even though you're not playing the prettiest brand of soccer, and not to mention another big thing of this Dynamo team, this defense is real. I mean, this defense is just rock salt at this season. They've only given up seven goals so, so far this season, and a team that defense was was a, 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 a thing that used to be a huge one for this Dynamo team, Again, what a job that Ben Olsen ha has done. For the second year in a row, he has really proven a lot of uh, doubters wrong. And again, the Dynamo off to a really good start and deserve an A grade. Now, for Sporting KC, it's going to be a C. So, for Sporting KC, I know some some of them might think it should be an F because of all those blown leads that we have. Or maybe a D, D grade. But I'm going to give them a C mainly be 
because, you know, yes, I know those blown leads are very frustrating, especially at, at, at home. But at the end of the day, they have been able to get, get resort uh, in some of these games. And they, they've also been getting wins and are still in a really good good position to get them themselves higher in the standings. Again, the West feels like similar to last season, where it feels like it's, it's uh, another season where the West, you know, I know the Galaxy maybe kind of started to, to, to round into to form, but it's still, for the rest of the, the conference, it's still just a big mystery box with a lot of teams just doesn't really find any consistency to really run away with uh, the rest of the pack. And as a result, you know, there's a lot of teams that are still in the mix despite they're getting off to a, a bad start. And again, for Sporting KC, depending on who you ask, I mean, it could be a bad start because of all those blown leads that, that they had. But when they don't blow blow leads, this is a really good good team. I mean, that's going to be something that they're, they're going to have to work on. And it's it's hard to work on that if uh, one of the r- real reasons why Sporting KC blown a lot of these leads is because they go conservative and Peter Vermees doesn't make, make subs to, to freshen thing, things up. And that's something that it's hard to change considering that's not the first time he's done it. He's been doing it for... Or for as long as he coached this Sporting KC team, and I can understand why Sporting KC fans are getting really fed up with Peter Vermees and the lack of, of sub that has just completely ruined this team. Now, the Galaxy, it's going to be an A. I mean, there's there's no no um, debate of why I say the Galaxy is an A. This is probably the, the best, best Galaxy team we have seen in a very, very long time. Probably... Uh, even better than a couple of years ago when they were near the top of the standings with Chicharito and, and some some of their their better uh, players uh, there. But unfortunately, they they kind of collapsed near the second half of the season, and I don't think that's going to be the case for this Galaxy team. I, I think this team is going to have some sustained sustained su- success, and it feels like they, they finally they uh, found found the the not only the attack but also the defense. I mean, it is still a little bit shaky. But man, that attack is is really scary. I mean, Ricky Pooch, he, he could be maybe be in running for for um, F- MVP in this league because of how good he's been. Even Joseph Painto too, as I mentioned, uh, a, a player that could be running for newcomer of the year because of the impact that he's been been bringing uh, to this team. And then Dejan Jovalich now finally uh, scoring the goals that he should have done done when he he won that that number nine job. And yeah, over. And then I haven't even got to to talk about the midfield too. Being very, very, very good on this team. I mean, it's been a great start for for the Galaxy and well deserved an A grade. Now for LAFC, um, I'll say B minus, mainly because yes, there has been some ugly resort for LAFC and they kind of got off to a bit of a tough tough start to the season. But that El Trafico wins definitely bumped the grade a little, little bit. I mean, anytime when you beat your your most hated rival, you know the the fans are going to be very happy about that but not not to mention the fact that it feels like they sort of are are, are get getting going on the attack and start to find the goals i mean as i mentioned this team was really struggling in terms of scoring goals early in the season i mean they they went through a really long dry period but they're starting to find their their feet a little bit although they're hoping that their main goal scorer denise bowanga can do the same thing because yeah it's been a little rough season for for denise bowanga but overall i think a b minus gray is going to it is fair in that I think LAFC is just going to continue to get stronger, especially if once Denise Bowanga eventually does come come out of his shell and start to finally score the goals that he he know he knows how to do last season. This team is going to be a, a force to be reckoned with again in the West. Now Miami, this might be a surprise to you, but I'm giving them a B grade, and I, I I know know some some will watch this video and think I'm I, I'm maybe just hating on my Miami because of what, what they're they're doing but the reason why i give miami a a b grade is the fact that you know one without well messi and and some of the the top heavy talent death is definitely an issue with this team and, and we have seen it too when they don't have have messi and some of his friends oh boy <laughs> this team team have, have problem in terms of going forward on the attack and then we will talk about the defense and how my goodness the defense has been an absolute mess right right now. I mean, again, this is, looks like a team that is just you know, the 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 reason why they're they're at least still being very good is because they're outscoring a, a lot of team and you know the attack of course ha- have definitely patched up the the bad work of the defense, but that doesn't ignore the fact that the defense has just been kind of what I thought it was going to be, and that of course is just unbelievably bad, especially on 
on, on set piece defending too. They still have issue in terms of that. They between them and the Galaxy have conceded the most goal in the the set pieces. And then also let's not not forget about the the turnovers to to this season. I mean, they've just so many brutal turn over for the, this year on the defensive front. If they don't patch that up in in the summer and maybe make some reinforcement in the summer uh in in terms of addressing their defense, this is not a team that I think could could win MLS Cup and definitely even compete for for uh the Eastern Conference crown because you know again I I know no they've been getting away with with wins and you know Messi and his friends have created some magical moment at time but it's not going to be be ignored once we get into the playoffs especially against even more tougher teams that they're going to be be facing where if that defense it, it is there and that also let's say if, if uh, one of their top heavy player gets injured then they could look like that that team that they they play against the New York Red Bulls where they got absolutely destroyed in that game now Minnesota um I'll give them I'll give them a B as well too you know, again, it feels like the way that I'm starting things seeing Minnesota is very s- similar to last season, where they get off to a great start, everything looks looks great, great and fine, and and the fact that you know, you you know, despite the fact that they did not, they do not have their most important player because it, he he he's a wall. Oh, uh, they're still doing well, but then they kind of hit hit a wall. Guess what happened this year? They get off to a good start, and maybe they're starting to hit on a wall. And not to mention, even the Reynoso thing is true now, because despite that he did re- return in one of the games, uh, now he's a wall once again in, in Argentina. And once again, we're back into to the, this waiting game of when exactly Reynoso would eventually show up to, to this team. And this is where there's that ongoing debate between between the Loons fan base. Oh, do we keep Reynoso, or do we decide to sell, sell him because we're tired of his stake? But... Overall, I will say that for Minnesota, you know, I I knew that that good start start wasn't going to to sustain, and I also know that this this is going to be a team that I mean I don't want to say they're kind of retool rebuilding this this season because of a new head coach coming in, but I am going to give Eric Ramsey uh the benefit of the doubt and going to give him time to build this team. I mean, you don't just build build a team and insert your philosophy into the team in in. Even some of the best head coaches in the league, guys, even like Pat Nolan, it, it didn't really start off very well doing his time with Cincinnati. It takes time for him to eventually implement that. And I feel like that's probably going to be the same case for, for Eric Ramsey. So for now, I'm going to say it's going to be a B, B grade because at least they pick up those, those points. And even though they're having a very similar season as last year where they started to slip a, a little bit in the month of April, I, I think, think it's been, been a solid season so far for Minnesota. Uh, for Montreal, uh, I'm going to give them a B-plus grade. And again, you know, obviously, see, I, I would say that for Montreal, in some way, I kind of want to give them an incomplete grade because, you know, they have that six-game road trip to start, which I thought that, that six-game road trip, they did did pretty well. I mean, yes, I know there was some ugly resort and also some refereeing controversy in one of the the, the game. But the, the fact that the, the goal was coming out of that six-game road trip be still in playoff contention well mission accomplished they're still in playoff contention and now they're going to have a very heavy home home uh kind of last th- three quarters of the season especially during the the summer month where they're going to get a lot of home games during the summer month the team can definitely start to make make noise and especially we're already starting to see lauren quatua and and what he, he wants to, to to do and kind of bringing almost that nancy ball kind, kind of ass play back into to montreal uh, when Nancy, of course, was still there in in Montreal before leaving Columbus, this is a Montreal team that that I think people should watch out for uh, as as if they can continue though to to get 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 wins, especially at, at home home as well. They were very good last season at home, and we'll see whether they can do it again this year. Now for Nashville, um, yeah, for Nashville it's a D grade because um, yeah, it's it's been a rough season for for Nashville and for. For Gary Smith's side again, you know the issue for 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 Nashville is kind of similar to what we saw during that that time when they just kind of fall off the cliff um, after the the Leeds Cup, where they don't have enough on, on the attack. They, I mean, I I will say that at least Sam Surge is definitely uh do, doing much better uh this this beginning of the season compared to uh the latter part of the season where he was pretty much a non non factor besides that hat trick. 
But the fact that Hani Mukhtar ha has really regressed uh, in, in this, this season. I mean, you're hoping maybe eventually he's going to go super nuclear in the middle of the season because, you know, last season Hani Mukhtar got off to a slow start. And then once he goes super nuclear, this Nashville team started to, to go. Because he's not, and because of the lack of goal sc scoring, and not to mention their defense started to, to regress a, a little bit, not playing as amazing as we, what we used to know of a, a Gary Smith Nashville SC side. That's kind of the resort that you're getting from this Nashville team. It's just not been good, good enough, uh, and they're they're definitely off to a, t a a bit of a bad start, but not as bad of a start as the next team I'll talk about, New England. Yeah, it's an F grade. I mean, it, it it's not. They're they're one of the 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 these team like what I talk about FC D Dallas that you know it's it's pretty easy why I I put them in an, in an F grade. It's been a, just a disastrous season for. New England and Caleb Porter uh, reign. And what we've seen other new head coach have has, has done a, a pretty good job uh, with their new team. Caleb Porter has been kind of left in, in, in the dust. I mean, this team have one win so far uh, this season and just getting absolutely blown apart by Club America pretty much just sums up. And now even after when they, they are done with, with Call Kiev Champions Cup play, they're still not really finding the strive that they, they, they need to. And I, I will say that that whole... Well, eventually, once some of their their best player does come back, maybe things will do well. But yeah, again, this this has been a disastrous. It, it's a start that that now it's getting to a point where it, it's not about New England maybe competing for MLS Cup. Can they even make it to the playoffs? I mean, this with a start like like this, it is very hard to try and to recover, and they they really need to be back at like like what what Bruce Arena did to the Revs a couple of years ago, uh, winning the supporter show and breaking the point total if they even want to have a shot of potentially uh getting getting themselves near the top of the standings um but again obviously that's not going to happen it's now all about just making the playoffs and they, they definitely need a big big turnaround in in the last three uh in the free quarter of the season uh meanwhile for the new york red bulls yeah it's been a day i mean it's been a great great season for the the new york red bulls i mean they were a little unlucky against chicago uh, in the the last game, but what Sancho Schwartz has done to this t team has been absolutely amazing, and I, I think you you would also say that this is what happened when the Red Bulls can finally uh, have some dangerous attacking king pieces and that guys can can score goals. I mean, last season that was a team that would have been a decent team. If they have some some attacking king talent. This season they do have that. I mean, the likes of so of Lewis Morgan, Emil Fro Frostberg, uh, has, has really cared carry the big low in terms of of the attack and we already know that they have a very good good defense so add a comb combination of that it's no surprise the red bulls are near near the top of the standing and they actually did, found themselves at the top of the standings even e even uh, just a week ago now their other new york counterpart nycfc um i'll give them a d plus grade because again it is still a slow start for for a nick cushion team and i, I would say that you know the the hot seat talk it has definitely simmered down just a a little, little bit because you know the the top top uh schedule that they have they actually did pretty well in some of the these these tough games yes i know some of the resort doesn't really quite quite show but consider how how how, how bad of a start the nycfc had in coming into that top top schedule it looked like they were going to go on a really really bad tailspin and kind of kind of be sitting where new england is currently in the Eastern Conference, but no, they they've done well doing that that stretch. They got a big win uh in the the last game against New New England to start to get themselves self a higher up in the standings. But again, you know, for this NYCFC team, they still have a long way to to go to trying to get themselves back to contention, and especially they're really hoping some of their their new signing can start to finally get going. I mean, a lot of these new signings have gotten off to a really slow. Start this year, and the the goal scoring is still a huge problem to to this team. I mean, uh, besides Santi Rodriguez, that there's really not a lot of goal scoring in this team. And also, let's not talk about Munsa Bakra and how he he's basically one of, if not the most snake bait number nine uh, in the league right now. Now for Orlando City, um, I'll say a D for Orlando, and I I, I know they did get that free two win uh, against DC United, and that was probably. The, the most impressive win that they had uh throughout this this season but let's be honest it, it hasn't been been a good start for Oscar team and again you know besides that free goal performance which is it feels like that's the most goal that they 
they've scored in in uh, th this season. Although I say that, and they did score three against uh, Minnesota, and they they lost that game. And I would also say that that probably is still to this day the worst. Uh, or not the wor worst game, but the best game that they played. The resort obviously is the worst outcome, but that was the best game that they play, and it it came on a, on a losing effort. But other than that, and the attack is still really struggling uh, on on this team. It's very similar to to last season where things kind of got off to a slow start to this team, and at least this season they don't really have the excuse uh, blaming on the fact that they're trying to get these new players to jail in. A lot of these players that they 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 have are, are guys that was there last season and they're they're not performing the the weight that they they should be and as a result it's been an, a bit of a slow start for Orlando City. Now for the Philadelphia Union, um, let's say B plus for them. And I know they're un unbeaten, so you're you're think thinking uh, or actually they're the only unbeaten team left in MLS, and you're thinking, how do I put the only unbeaten team? in MLS at, at B+. Plus. Well, simply because, you know, again, the regular season doesn't really matter for the Philadelphia Union. I'm pretty sure every Union fans will say, well, it's great that if they can can get themselves potentially first in the Eastern Conference. That doesn't matter. What's going to happen when it comes to, to the playoff time? And at least so far, in, in terms of knockout tournament, as what we saw in the CONCACAF Champions Cup, that has to concern Union fans. Because what they did in the CONCACAF Champions Cup Look like it's a it's a it's a repeat of all those failures that they have in the knockout stage. So while Union fans are happy that the team is starting to get get going again, and that you know you know I know I remember in the first couple of games when this team was doing really bad, and there was even people questioning Jim Curran's uh, job and and the way that this team just doesn't have it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Jim Curran is basically laughing at at those those takes now with the way that they they look like the the Philadelphia Union of the old in the last couple of games. Though again, Union fans will will will. Well, basically, basically uh, counter by saying, well, what about when we get to the playoffs? Well, what about when we get to the, the knockout stage? And I think the Leeds Cup might be another proven ground for them to see whether or not if they can get over the hump when we get to a knockout kind of kind of format compared to the regular season. Now, for the Portland Timbers, um, I'm going to give them a C grade. Again, the Timbers got off to an amazing start to the season, but obviously they after that, I mean, they... They haven't really won a single game so far. And I will say that the attack, of course, has started to find some, some rhythm. I mean, you know, the attack was a bit of an issue during the, the beginning of, of that losing run. But obviously, say the big big issue for the Timbers is still the defense. I mean, Maxine Crapo can only do so so much when when uh, when you are basically putting a non-existent de defense uh, in front. I mean, this defense that the Timbers had probably one of the... The, the worst in the Western Conference. I wouldn't say they're the, they're the 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 worst because there are some teams, especially the one I'll, I'll about to, to to mention, probably have, have the the worst uh defense right right now uh in the the Western Conference. But yeah, yeah the the even though that the, the goal scoring is definitely start to to pick up a little bit, the fact that the defense hasn't really been very good is kind kind of hold hold them them back a little bit and unless they can't figure that out this maybe it's kind of what we might see the the timbers be like for the the, the rest of the season and and they've also been getting a lot of sentiment wins lately even doing this lo long winless run where where yeah they they of course got got draws that they probably should have lost especially that free nothing game where they they were down down and it looked like they there was no way they can come back for it and then sporting kc basically said hold my beer and blow another third lead but yeah I think it's on point to put them at, at C, C grade the 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 season the, or the start of the season that they have so far. Now for RSL, um, I'm gonna put them at at B. So for RSL again, you know this is a team that it looks very similar to last season, at least in the beginning of the year, where they're 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 very hot and cold. They're a team that when they're hot and when Chicho Arango is scoring goals, this team looked like unstoppable. But then there's also time where they 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 look look cold and look look like a a team when Chicharrongo is not score, scoring goals, and then at times they have games where they they don't show show up on on the attack or just it show up on the attack but can't put the ball into the back of net like what we saw in the la last game game against Columbus uh, at home. Yeah, that's that's got to be very frustrating for for RSL fan because they they know the potential uh, uh, of this team even with uh, the absence of Pablo Ruiz. Uh, there there is a potential that this should be be a, a team that should compete in the West, but. They don't. Really have that that inconsistency in them, and that's going to be something 
that they got to fig figure out if they want to put this together. Now, moving on to the Quakes. I mean, it's not even even a discussion. I put them F. I mean, F obviously does not stand for 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 uh, Fisher, but F definitely stand stand for just an absolute disastrous season for the Quakes. And remember how I talked about about t the Timbers having one of the worst defense. I gotta say the Quakes probably have the worst defense right now. I mean, I mean it, it's just and what's crazy about it is that the defense was supposed to Im improve uh, from last season, and yet at times they they're still kind of shipping uh, goals for fun. Well, actually, I think the Quakes defense is not 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 one of the worst. I think you could argue maybe Austin probably still still have a worse defense, but yeah, uh, the defense is not very good. The goalkeeping also hasn't been been very good uh as well obviously daniel definitely regressed uh this year though we found out later uh, there's a reason why he regressed it seems like he was suffering a knock and then william yarbo has been co coming in lately you know he hasn't really been that spectacular but we kind of knew that doing his days uh with uh, the colorado rapids and add to the fact that this team can't score score goals uh, and also can't hold on lead leads on, on the the road you get the the quakes right now have having the right now right now um not on, on, only a debt debt last uh in the east uh, or in the western conference but currently suffer the most loss out of any team in MLS right now uh the seattle sounders so um I'm gonna say d minus and the re the only reason why i didn't put them uh in an f grade is mainly because while well, they're still kind of dealing with a, a bit a couple of in injuries and, and and that you know they did have that big five nothing uh win uh re recently that kind of upped their grade a little maybe by one one tiny letter but yeah just like the the quake quake seattle they have problems scoring goals i mean th this is a team we we saw this happen last year as well it's happening thing again and that and that not to, to to mention yes i know missing pedro de la vega is is huge and once he comes back i think the, the attack should maybe be improved, and that's a big shit because you know, this attack still there's still a long way way they need to do. I think they they definitely need that that difference maker. But other than that, their defense definitely not as good as what we saw saw last year, and that's kind of what you get for for the Seattle Sounders this season. Off to really just a terrible start. I mean, I I guess maybe the Sounders are trying to do what they 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 did a couple of years ago, trying to follow the old narrative of the Sounders when Brian Schmitz took place, where it's not about what happened in the first half of the season. The first half of the season is when we punt the season. That's when we're going to have that, that magical second half resurgence. And I mean, I won't be surprised if that's the case because, Hey, that's the, the Seattle Sounders MO um, when Brian Schmitz took over. So maybe we will see that again. I mean, that's a big maybe because again, uh, compared to those bad teams that, that we saw, saw in the beginning of the, the season that had a second half resurgence, Unless they do make some some signings and hope that Pedro de la Vega is going to go scorch scorch earth, it's it's tough to convince this team is going to have that second half resurgence like what we've seen before. Now for St. Louis, um, I'm going to give them a C grade, and that's kind of on point. I mean, it's been kind of a bit of a mediocre season for St. Louis. There's no doubt that they have definitely regressed compared to to last season. The frustrating thing about St. Louis this year is that they're just drawing way too many games this year there, there's just too many draws both home and on the road and while some of these draws has been good draw some of them are are, are very frustrating draw especially against teams that they they should should beat um too though again they did finally stop that that draw narrative of getting a a, a win against dallas though that game or not dallas i'm sorry but against uh, austin fc they drew against uh dallas at home and uh, yeah, that was kind of an un unconvincing win, win too, because you know they didn't really trade. I mean, the attack has definitely regressed uh, bad badly, and I think most part of that is because you know teams are starting to figure it out that as long as, as you you don't don't let uh, St. Louis to to press you and win the ball high up the pitch, or just decided to, to make some mental mistake, as what we seen last season, St. Louis tends to always like to do. You're you're probably gonna be fine against this St. Louis attack, and also. Not to mention losing Leuven, that is definitely a, an injury that 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 has really kind of haunted them in terms of the playmaking ability. But yeah, uh, I think C is kind of on point of the fact that it's been kind of a very mediocre kind of start of the season, and and at times a very frustrating start of the season too because of the amount of games that they've drawn so far this season. Now for Toronto, 
I'm gonna give them the same grade as well. And you know, if this, if I did this maybe a couple of weeks ago, I would have gave them a, a a B or an A A minus grade because you know what John Herman has done to this TFC team in the beginning of the season and the the good run that they they had and the surprising good run that they they have is something that I don't think anyone saw coming. But now it seems like reality is starting to, to hit them in these last couple of games. These last couple of games, I'm starting to see the, the Toronto FC of, of last year of why they, they were the worst team in MLS and a team that is clearly in a rebuilding year and even a year where I said that this is a year not about, about getting getting uh, to, uh getting good and competing uh, for the playoffs. It's about, about going through a complete rebuild to free, pretty much uh, shred as many dead way as and fall for as the season goes along, and then just kind of in the in the beginning part of the, the this deep rebuild that they go through. The first part of the deep rebuild is always the the, the toughest part, and that right now uh, for for Toronto again, even with the good start that they have, it feels like now reality is starting to set in that oh yeah we are we are now in that 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 uh, in that growing pain of this deep rebuild by losing a lot of these these games, and I will not be surprised. If this, of course, can continue, oh, they will find themselves in a, in a spot where we thought that they're probably going to finish this this season. That, of course, is dead last. Though so New England would definitely want to have a word of it because New England um, have, have have gone on to such a bad start that it will it'll take take more losing for Toronto to get get to to that point. And unfortunately, unlike in in other professional sport like the NHL, NBA, uh, MLB, and notoriously the NFL, because the NFL is literally the, the league where you know that that word tank tanking the NFL was basically the king in terms of that because literally that 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 league ha, ha, has just so much tanking that is going on to get that number one pick in 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 the draft that that yeah that's kind of how 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 the the phrase really really brought back by obviously you know the other league tanking still does can exist though you know they did have do have the draft lot lottery in those those leagues so that's kind of discouraged in terms of some of the, the tanking that's going on. Fortunately, I can't say the same thing. I mean, the, the Super Draft, there are some hidden, hidden, hidden gems in terms of it, but there's not really a lot of hidden gems that from the Super Draft that comes from the number one one pick. So, yeah, again, that, that's why we don't see teams just go completely, completely go, go, going through through a, a complete tank, so just because they can get a better draft pick in the, the Super Draft. And not to mention, TFC isn't even going to get the number one pick next season because we know the number one pick next season is going to be belong to San Diego FC with them coming into the league. Then we look at the Vancouver Whitecaps. This is a minus for them. Again, you know, they're still still very decent. Second in the Western Conference off to a green start to the year. I can understand why some people uh, are, are are not believing in Vancouver and maybe feel like where they, the start of the season is maybe a little bit, bit kind of fra fraudulent and maybe a little pretend this because they've been playing against so many easy teams to start the season and the, the first time that they play against a real true opponent like the Galaxy they pretty much folded in 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 that game though again because of the Galaxy playing so well I, I'm not gonna fault say that that is kind of the game that kind of prove everybody right the fact that maybe Vancouver is a bit fraudulent and that their record maybe be, be is, is a little bit better than than they should be when, especially when they do face against some good team I think that's going to be really a measuring stick for Vanny Sartini team. Once they do start playing against some stronger team in the, the, the Western Conference, and especially maybe even play against strong team in the Eastern Conference in terms of cross-platform play, they can definitely send a statement that, hey, we are our record is not a fluke. Uh, we are actually got, got off to, to a good start to the season, and I think it's time that you, that you should give us some, some respect that, that we we, we did serve especially this the, the start of the season that they've been in so far but there you have it that is pretty much it in terms of grading every single team in the beginning of the season as always let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video and as always let me know in the comments below in terms of some of these grades do i grade some team too high or do i grade some team too low anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like smash the subscribe button and yeah i of course will see you guys next time